Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here are your hosts, Monica Profit and Tracy Hazard. Hi, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Prophet. I'm here with Tristan Toma. He's the Director of Strategy of the Americas at Diginex. Welcome, Tristan. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. It's great to see you. We actually are colleagues and friends outside of this, so it's been super easy to just connect with you and schedule this and reschedule it. And it's the summer, so you know it's going to be kind of lazy days until we figure out how August can wrap up. <laughs> I think it's going to be two months of like, who knows what for a while. Which I'm totally okay with. <laughs> How is that affecting your, uh, your position at the, as a um, director of strategy? Is it, have things gotten a little slower for you? Or are you still kind of keeping things at a, at a fast clip? We, we work quickly when we have uh, an immediate project. But because a lot of our projects are enterprise, the, the pipeline is, is longer. So to get a signature, you know, as opposed to like really startup <laughs> world is, okay, well, we've met twice already. Why haven't you signed? Oh my gosh. The startup world is so refreshing that way where it's like, yeah. okay, we're friends. Let's do this. And then we just move on. Like by Friday, yeah. we're already done. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. So, so you got into this though. You sort of, you did get into this really quickly, right? I mean, in the, you were sort of more of a startup in the before at uh, your previous company, right? In Para Strategy? Yes, definitely. That was very startup. That was, uh, I was doing IT and operations management for another company and um, basically got sick of it. And <laughs> I, I thought I was going to go into management consulting. And the day that I quit my previous job, I founded my own company just because I wanted to. I had always wanted to found a company. And so I made up the name, made up a website, and I knew more than other people about blockchain at that time. This was three years ago and I had been involved for a while. And so I started giving seminars and it was just, I booked a place on my wallet and hoped that people would buy tickets. Wow. <laughs> and that was, that was the startup. That was, um, you know, making relationships, friendships that lead, led to second and third meetings that led to contracts. And, Hence the startup was born. Oh my goodness, that's so organic, you know? Yeah. I mean, so many service businesses don't just kind of evolve that, that easily. But then again, when you hit a new industry and you happen to be an early expert, it really helps. Yeah. 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 So how did that flow into, into Diginex? It seems like, you know, they're similar, right? I mean, they're doing kind of yeah. similar things. Absolutely. Diginex is, I would say, um, enterprise grade or institutional blockchain startup. So yeah, it technically, I guess, is a startup. It's been around for three years. And um, they take similar projects to what I was working on. And I was doing a small scope of it. Uh, in that, in, in Impera strategy, I did uh, implementation strategy. Pretty high level meeting you know, with executives on how we can go about this. So it was writing white papers and kind of category theory or mapping and you know, these little diagrams and understanding what the technical and financial flow. So where would money go and where would data go? And I would kind of map that out with their team, understanding their ecosystem, given the new influence of a distributed technology, right? So blockchain. And um, whether or not that even utilized tokenization or tokens. And so that was a whole conversation. And yeah. the basis of that business was, you know, I know blockchain really well. You know your company really well. And I have a background in, in university. I studied organizational psychology. And that's about structuring and systems. And I love that stuff. <laughs> It's marriage with tech and business just was this beautiful, you know, combination of, all right, well, we have the human element uh, element of incentives, 
and you know, organization and structure. And then you have this technical element of blockchain and this new technology and tokenization and smart contracts and how those work and integrating it with legacy technologies. And that happened to be a niche that I was able to perform in very well just because of my background. And that was in Paris strategy. And along the, the term of running Impera, uh, one of my clients um, that I, I wrote a white paper and designed a protocol for is actually distributed oracles for validating smart contracts before ah. they get into a into a smart contract. Right. Was, yeah, I mean, that, was a, that was a fun, amazing project. They raised a bunch of money and ended up getting semi-acquired by Diginex. Ah, uh, okay. The CEO of, of, uh, of that client uh, is now in Diginex as a CEO of America's um, for Diginex. And um, so they basically turned around and you know, said, well, Tristan, you wrote the thing. So <laughs> you should be involved in, in commercializing it more. And so with Diginex, I just have immense mind power resources from these incredibly smart men that come from investment banking world and they're used to doing multi-million dollar deals. And, wow. Um, can I tell you a fun quick story? Yes, tell me yeah. a fun quick story. So right when I started, I've only been in the company maybe five months. And uh, right when I started, I found a client that I had approached thinking, you know, with the same thinking of Impera, you know, we'll understand their business, we'll do an analysis and consulting, write some literature for them, uh, give them a structure for business and tech. And, you know, it's a, it's a good whatever, let's say $70,000 project. Yeah. I mean, it would, it would take the time of a few months and we, we would get the paperwork drawn up. And I called up our head of capital markets who happened to be the head of capital markets for, I think it was like HSBC Spain. Like oh, wow. All of Spain. And this guy's like, these guys are no joke. I called him up <laughs> to talk to him about it. And his first response is like, why would we, why would we do that? You know, six, what are we going to do with seven grand? What are we going to do? And he goes on for maybe three, four minutes. And at the end, he's like, and that's how we make $4 million off of it. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, and wow. along with making money is, is the scale of impact that they can do, right? They, they, they really are an institutional kind of group and they work on that level. So for me, it's a little frustrating in that I like to work fast and nimble. Yes. And so they seem slow, but at the same time, they're so methodical and they, they know their shit, which is yeah. part. So I, thought, I just thought that was a fun story. Right That's honest. amazing. Yeah. I mean, and also being able to just kind of get in there and be the agile person who knows how to, how to get something new implemented and then just kind of have to give them the information and wait and wait until like their cogs and their wheels start to... Oh boy, cool your jets. Just get your ohm on, you know? <laughs> I think, and, and also from, from the organizational psychology side, that's, I, I think that's a great combination of one person that wants to move and push and not play by the rules and, you know, start up. And like, we have a joke because our, our general counsel sits right behind me. Uh -huh. We're always like, I'm, I, every conversation, I start off yelling at him like, let's go, come on, why are you stopping me? <laughs> At the end of 10 minutes, he's right. <laughs> he's totally right. We have to do this methodically and slow. I yeah. can't tell you how many contracts are just like, they just stall in legal. And I'm like, come on, we're all friends here. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure, I mean, I, we know each other a little bit, so I'm sure you've been burned on, on that type of approach as if I, so. Yeah, yeah. These guys are just smarter about it. Yeah, that's a lot smarter for sure. Well, it sounds like you've also worked with some really big enterprise clients that have moved forward and done some really cool stuff. Uh, you were telling me about Salesforce the other day. You want to recap <coughs> that one? That's just, I mean, in terms of blockchain being so usable and such such a great tool for data, user data, Salesforce is just, of course, a no-brainer application. So yeah, go into that one, that one, that one. Ooh, Salesforce, delicious. <laughs> It, it's really been, I think, the apex of my career so far was, um, was working with Salesforce. Our team had contact with them, I think it was November of last year, 
um, just kind of randomly. And then again, Indigenex, we had uh, a partner that brought them to us and said, hey, you know, Salesforce is looking at blockchain. You guys are really good at it. They have actually their own blockchain division. They have the whole guys and their team. Um, but we wanted to come in and provide something um, special and, and unique given our background. So in the course of, I think it was about a month and a half, startup style, we built in partnership with Virtusa, which is a, a billion dollar software company. Hmm. And Virtusa is, is really, their engineers are top grade and we have a close relationship with their CEO um, and really a partnership with their company. So we at Diginex worked together with Virtusa and designed this product for integrating any Salesforce data to blockchain and basically building that API for, you know, just any commercial purpose that it could be used for. And the rhetoric goes just like anybody else, you know, blockchain can be used for anything. Yeah, but okay, so tell me, with this API, give me one example of how, blo how Salesforce is going to funnel that straight into a new application for people. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. This wakes me up in the morning. So <laughs> the one... As I said, the apex was was with Salesforce, and actually that moment came when we presented in uh, Trailhead. So they have Salesforce has two big conferences every year. There's Dreamforce, which is their general, mm -hmm. and Trailhead, which is their developers. So we had Diginex had a booth in Trailhead, and we went there, and one of the existing Salesforce customers called Be the Match, and Be the Match is a company that matches bone marrow donors to recipients oh my gosh and really the guy we got into a conversation the guy almost started crying in front of me because he was still so inspired about what they do after working there i think he's been there for seven years wow. he's their head architect for salesforce integration and um the conversation has has grown from there i just got off the uh off the phone with him again earlier and we're making now more decks because we're institutional um, about how we can assist them with their FDA compliance and, and attestation to compliance um, by integrating the Salesforce cloud data onto blockchain. Because oh right gosh. now, I mean, a little going into details, up until now and for many years, they've been using Oracle systems and Oracle has a, kind of a, a level that FDA is comfortable with auditing and showing and checking that, yes, this is compliant but they're migrating, Be The Match is migrating now to Salesforce to basically increase their efficiency, but they're not sure if the Salesforce cloud hosted data will be sufficient for FDA compliance. So our approach is really not so much like, hey, blockchain this token, it's cool. It's more so we're gonna save you a ton of money on your compliance because we can show with 100% validity and even include auditors when and if necessary yep. on checking that this information is correct. And I mean, the auditors could just run a node. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> I, that's what I think. Um, we also, Indigenex, have we're really good at partnerships. We love the whole ecosystem. And uh, Will McDonough, the uh, CEO of Indigenex Americas, has this great line. He says, you know, I don't see anybody as competition. You know, they're all collaborators. Yes, yes. That's how I operate as well. It's like such an open space that there's just no, this is not a place where we're, there's no red ocean here, you know? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And we're spoiled for choice in the opportunity to really make amazing things. So um, we had partnered with uh, Microsoft on a different project um, that Diginex had created in Thailand for social impact. It's been running for multiple months now. And we use the Azure um, uh, platform for, for hosting a node. And yep. So if you can get an auditor on one of the nodes, awesome. Then you're done. It's that easy. Yeah. That's amazing. So I think, you know, I've heard from so many people in the blockchain space that they are either deep in the tech and they're just enamored with it, you know? So mm -hmm. they're like, I have this hammer, where's the nail? Where's the nail? Where's the nail? And they just really want to apply it, you know? And that seems to be the approach of many people in this space because the technology is, is exciting. It's, it's worth being enamored with. But, yeah. you know, the approach that you've been taking, even when, you know, before DigiNets all along has been how is, what, what is a business really going to gain out of this? How does this save them money or make them money faster? And, yeah. and really starting there and seeing if blockchain is the right application for that. It's, it's you know, mm -hmm. um, how normal business works, but mm -hmm. in new technology, it's, it's, not the, 
Wait a second here. Normal business? What? <laughs> well, I mean, normal business, like we're trying to just make sure we get the right tool to make this more efficient rather than we love this tool. Where can we possibly put it? Whether yeah. that's the best tool or not. You know what I mean? So they said the other day, they said blockchain, smart chain. Let's figure that now. <laughs> right. You know? Right. And there were even in, in, in Trailhead, you know, we, we were across actually from uh, DocuSign. And once again, the non competition, there are a lot of people that was, well, why don't you use DocuSign? You know, they have, they have a great DMS, document management system. Yeah. Um, and there are times that that's appropriate and there are times that it's not the right solution. Yeah. Exactly. And one of the guys that, we, that I spoke with there, um, I think, yeah, French guy. Um, he actually wants to partner us up with DocuSign now so that we can ah. provide the blockchain services on the DocuSign backend. And that's another example. You know, we, Absolutely. Thankfully, in, in Diginex, you know, we're around 130 people globally, I think. It's headquartered in Hong Kong and we have offices in London, Geneva, Berlin, here, um, people in Miami, uh, just really all over. And this partnership with Virtusa gives us the ability to be able to deliver on projects. You know, let's say we go into DocuSign. Let's say we go into JP Morgan. Or, you know, we have that capability to go into a conversation with, you know, full understanding that we can deliver, which is yeah. such, it's invigorating for me. I'm still, yeah. you know, I'm pretty new at the job. And so... It's, it's, it's a, change a privilege of, in a way, you know, yeah. just to know that you come from, we have so much firepower behind you. It's a privilege to say like, oh, absolutely, we can do this, you know? Yes, yes. That's so. wonderful. That is so cool. I mean, you're, you're clearly um, not just enamored with the technology, but enamored really with the entire ecosystem that you're able to help build and help to foster, you know? Definitely. And we're yeah. still picking it up. I mean, we're... I love speaking in conferences and, and meeting the people and, and getting into fantastic debates about, <laughs> you know, what, what tech is. And it is very fun, as you said, you know, and fun and easy to get an error from the tech and finding that middle balance between what's technically possible and feasible and pushing the ecosystem forward. And at the same time, what's going to make you money in the next 18 months. Right, exactly. And do you need that or not? It's, I was actually speaking with an investor just yesterday and he said, you know, well, why are you using blockchain? You know, I've, I've heard about this. I have a company that's doing something that's a fractional and different investments, you know, over in Indonesia. Why do we need this? And I was like, secondary markets are gonna open up. And if you can't trade your digital assets that way, you're, you're the one that's chokeholding your own opportunity for growth and liquidity, sorry. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh. It just he wouldn't, hadn't even thought about how, you know, if you can't digitize your investment, you're going to have a hard time participating in these huge new asset classes that are coming up, you know, and it's yeah. people just haven't thought about it. It's almost like uh, we're two futurists sitting here going like, ha ha ha, the future has arrived. <laughs> this is a great quote that says the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. Ooh, I love that. I yeah. love it. You're right. You're right. Because it is here in so many I ways. Agree. And that was, um, that was a large part of actually, as I, if I recall correctly, how Diginex started in that these guys, they were in Hong Kong and they saw people running around with suitcases of cash. <laughs> and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you know, they're investment bankers. They know how to do this stuff in a way that, like, you know, even as simply as building a company that could be acquired. Right, right. You know, like, so if you look at finance or if you look at any of these most, I would say most other blockchain based companies haven't done the KYC, AML or, or legal steps to even, you know, be an acquisition target in the right. future. Right. And Digimax has gone about it systematically from the very beginning. Obviously we're, you know, we make money, we have clients, and we're, we're functioning as a business, but like these guys, they made it in such a way that we could, if we wanted to, I wanted to, you know, at one point be acquired. Yeah. And that's, that says something about the, the change in the, in the approach. Yes. Okay. Yes. Love the tech. It's going to be here in five years. Yeah. You and, you know, work on, a, work on a bigger project and go about it like, like big boys. Exactly. Know? Like big boys. So finally, there's no more pull-ups. There's actually big boy pants on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, not on everyone. <laughs> you know the story the other day of, you know, somebody like, 
OTC and cash and then it's just oh my gosh yeah cash and it's yeah. got to be here and they've got to show up with this much money in a, in a briefcase literally I just thought really? <laughs> What is yeah. this? The Dukes of Hazard meets like Silicon Valley. This is so yeah. stupid. <laughs> it still exists, and I think that's fine for for a while. Yeah. As long as there are people that you know approach it a little differently. Yeah. yeah. And again, that clash, right? The startup corporate clash. Yeah. The Dukes of Hazard, Silicon Valley. <laughs> then, a little bit of clash. clash. <laughs> you know, the most innovation comes from the circles. Overlapping, yeah, come on, like let's get the concentric circles getting closer to each other, not further away, you know? Yeah. And I think the Venn diagram is getting tighter, you know? And then we can party afterwards. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, nobody parties as well as the blockchain community, that's for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so after all of this organizational psychology and everything else, I have to ask you a random question, which is, can you remember a single class in college that was your favorite class? Category theory. Category theory, why? It was, I think, I think they, like the, the term on the college credit was philosophy or something, but the teacher went into category theory and he was doing his, uh, his uh, doctorate on, on category theory. And what, if you haven't heard of it before, it's meant to be the simplest articulation of the relationship between entities. So you have an element in a group and another element in a group and they're mapping, which is the connection or the correlation between the two. So it's like, and, and it can be abstracted to anything, to how a living organism functions, to how I speak with you in that I'm an entity in a group of people in Diginex. You're an entity in a group of people of New Trust Economy. And our mapping right now is this conversation. But that mapping is dynamic as well as the entities and the groupings. And the way that you define, redefine, and, and work with the elements, groups, and mappings helps to like put, just put a name to something. And then you can create a function and then, um, and then perpetuate that function, right. right? So different person from Diginex, let's say we wanted to recreate re this, Diginex, New Trust Economy conversation. And once you have that mapping, it becomes an articulated way to systematize effectively anything. And it's just, it's so, can I swear? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. <laughs> you already did. You said shit. I was like, yay, this oh, is yeah. broken. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. We're South Park now, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but really, that, that was one of the strongest pushes in how I approached, in a, and how I approached a lot of my work is because I want to make something work, you know, functionally yep. the first time and be able to articulate its perpetuation, per perpetuation, sorry. Yeah. And I would, another one of like my quotes on a yeah. tagline or, or whatever is everything is nothing until it's something. So okay. when, when somebody says like, oh, blockchain can do anything. Well, until nothing, blockchain until is something. something, it's doing nothing. From a business case, from a technical case, you know, from anything or you can take it also to different parts of life yeah. Relation. this person could be anyone well anything is nothing until it's something and category theory helps to articulate mapping relationships and once you pull that into business you articulate the financial flow between entities or you could abstract that to value flow and have that be data or have it be you know social value or whatever it is yep and yeah just just molding that and remolding it like clay is really fun. Maybe that's actually the nice way of, the, the, the more pleasant lens to use when you think about the bureau, otherwise seemingly bureaucratic approach of larger enterprise companies. It's like, they're just very, very slowly, methodically categorizing all of the elements yeah. before they map anything, right? I like it. Yeah, okay. yeah. You're it's good. Trying to, <laughs> trying to think in more forgiving terms of like, for my impatience, <laughs> they're just, yeah. they're doing it really well. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. It's, I have to admit, it's kind of annoying, but it's such a, such a value, such a value because they don't work like if I were to go into, you know, an, an actual corporation, but they have that, you know, safety measure yeah. as it were. So it's been fun. And with Salesforce, I mean, we're, we're speaking with their, you know, their head of blockchain all the time. And they had, they sang about us after, you know, seeing our, 
our products and or, or seeing our, our, our systems. And that's exciting. That's yeah. just, yeah, that's mono high from that. Well, also, I now, mean, when you come in as the agile and, um, you know, flexible, ready to do it, can do it in six weeks, you know, kind of, you're this, this spark in this fire. And they're like, they've been on a slow burn for a while. Of course, it's easy for them to sing about you guys, right? Because you just do all the things that they, almost that they, that they can't do or that they don't accomplish as fast. It's, it can be very impressive. But then at the same time, you know, as long as you can handle the fact that they're going to go slower, you're going to always be the shining light that's like, gleam, it's done, yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, so exactly when we do that, when we come up with Virtusa, and Virtusa is our, our, our software development partner, we can bang out almost anything. It's, it's, it's so incredible. Like, wow. that company, it's billion dollar revenue company, 35,000 engineers, and wow. they built the rails for, I think it was like, 30 something of the 50 world's largest banks. Oh my gosh. So when we're talking to them and you know, we, we propose a structure, these guys just come back with the most absurdly intelligent responses and questions. And I worked with them on the, on the previous project um, that got acquired with iCash and, or not acquired, but kind of drawn into uh, Diginex. Yeah. And first time working with them, I was just, blown away and every time I speak with anyone from their team they're just top-notch wow. so when we come to them with this firepower you know they said at one point um I said well it seems like you guys are further ahead than IBM I was like what's going on here <laughs> yes actually that that might be very true <laughs> yeah because we're technology agnostic we don't care if it's you know Hyperledger, Corda, Ethereum, Stellar, Ripple just yeah half -half. just All get it done Exactly. So the, the, the schema that we approach Salesforce with is all right, you have a very robust Heroku, you know, world, just like the Salesforce managed package um, software environment. And we started from there. So we can abstract data in lines that can be added and attracted that map directly to a smart contract. And that smart contract on the blockchain side can be any blockchain because of the way that we have created it on the Salesforce side. And that's different than how Salesforce, because Salesforce has their own blockchain product. I mean, right. they had a little section in Trailhead and they said, here's Salesforce and blockchain and they had guys up. And after speaking with us, you know, they said, well, we want you guys on stage at Dreamforce. You know, so that's, that's what I'm doing like day to day now is I'm trying to, you know, define that product um, the MVP and, and the use case hopefully will be, be the match to be inspiring and incredible. Absolutely. And I mean, I've been personally, I've always been keeping an eye out for what is the most agnostic way to build on blockchain so that, you know, if something goes down if something, if the company goes away, some, you know, it's all such early days, you build on the wrong network and you could end up with a network that doesn't have anyone supporting it anymore. So uh, that migration and that ability to move is huge. It's almost like a I, in the in the world of crypto and tokens, I've thought about this and I've asked it many times. If you guys are investing in companies that have a token, but then you know those that company gets acquired, what is your acquisition strategy for that? And they're like, you mean a reverse fork? And I'm like, whatever you want to call it, you have now this this thing that you think brought value to your ecosystem, but it, upon acquisition, it might not be transferable. Like, what are you gonna do? You know? So um, it's I'm glad. I mean, the more agnostic and the more like. Um, Kind of nuts and bolts of wealth wealth built foundation we have in blockchain the more we're going to be able to grow in a robust way so yeah. i i appreciate it very much in fact i i want to find out more <laughs> definitely so will uh will mcdonough who's been my my guide and he was the ceo of, of iCash, um came into diginex that that was his approach from the entire time because he didn't come from the blockchain world he came from you know banking and finance. His last company was uh, Atlas Mara, went public on the London Stock Exchange for I think it was like 800 and something million dollars. Wow. And so his approach was, you know, the system even then, let's say chain agnostic, tech agnostic to the function and the value of what we're gonna provide. So now we come in here, we're building something for Salesforce. We're saying chain and tech agnostic, but we're providing this incredible value for something that can be used almost ubiquitously. Yep. Yep. And so that's how we want to approach every project and any opportunity in, you know, cool, you have this tech, awesome, 
if it's valid, that you know, we can start with that. How are you gonna make money? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just answer the elephant yeah. in the room question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. amazing. That's a conference. Like that. <laughs> so when is your next conference? What are you going to next? Um, Do you have anything on the calendar or is it also slow days because it's summer? It's, there was one, I was just, well, I mean, the main one that I'm, that I'm trying to prepare for would be Dreamforce. Yeah. And so if we can have the product and the system and the, the, the tech and the story ready by Dreamforce, which is, I think, November. Yeah. Or so towards the end of the year. That's, to, I mean, I love to speak at conferences and I want to speak to a lot more, at a lot more of them. But that's the one that I would spend my time focusing on because it, it's, it's my work. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's the um, big. Oh my goodness. Um, so just a moment, I have to um, remove. Oops, no, I'm sorry. I... So someone just joined us and I just went, I need to get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun, Simon. <laughs> Um, he's, he's six minutes early, so we're going to have to edit that part out. <laughs> so I have a meeting with, uh, with my team and Simon is now joined the team. So, um, awesome. <laughs> he yes. pops into my Zoom. That's the first time for that to happen. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So I guess cool. I'm going to sit still for a second so we can cut here. <laughs> So this has been such a cool conversation. I just have one last question to ask you. It's also sort of a random question, but I ask almost all of my guests this, just to get an idea of how people work, not just what they're working on, but you know, I get to talk to so many smart people. It sounds just like you, you know you're in the right room when you're not the smartest person in the room and you're just kind of like clawing to keep up and go, what was that? What was, that? okay, I'm taking notes, you know? And I've got to circle back to that idea. So, um, but also the demeanor of the people and how they work and what inspires them to work is always so interesting to me. So mm -hmm. I do not wake up fresh as a bird in the morning. I am just not the morning lark at all. I am a total night owl, but I always wonder, you know, because there's this, oftentimes there's a, there's a preconceived notion that people who wake up early are more ambitious or they, I don't know. I just, so I always wonder, and I want to gather data in case there may be a, a counter narrative here. So I'm just wondering, are you an early morning person or do you work late? Uh, how does that work? And, and how does it uh, fit into your work life and, and with, the, with the company and everything else? I don't have a set answer for that. I'm sorry, okay. I can't give you much content, but it ebbs and flows. There are, there are times that I, I'm up at midnight taking calls, especially, you know, we have the Hong Kong team. And there have been times that I'm up at 4 a.m. taking calls because we have the Hong Kong team. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally not on the same 24 hours. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, it's hard to say. I wouldn't say I'm like one of those uh, uh, military army-esque people that wake up at 6 a.m. and go for a run and work out and stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> um, I don't know when was the last time I went to a gym. I exercise, but you know. gyms are not the place. Yeah, I totally get that. I, I'm like, gyms make me sad. I mean, just to totally derail this conversation to gym talk. I mean, I go to gyms and I think all the women are trying to get smaller and all the men are trying to get bigger and they're all doing the same things and no one's just happy with who they are. Like, I can't do this. I have to go. I'm going to go for a run out with the trees. I can't do this. Yes. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. When it's time to exercise, I, I cycle. I, yeah. I, I feel a lot. Um, fun. I don't have like necessarily morning regimen except for no. my contacts and get to work. All right. So, and how about your work life? I mean, are you allowed to kind of come in because they know you're going to be up until midnight. So you come in, it's a flexible schedule or is there really an expectation that you'll be working later hours because you're overlapping with Hong Kong a lot? It's pretty dynamic. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing, um, I got very lucky being in this company because they work, we work. And at the same time, you know, like if I have to go to a dentist appointment in the middle of the day and take two hours, like, yeah. okay, just don't schedule any meetings then. And yeah, and your teeth look great. I mean, it, clearly it's working. The strategy is paying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you so much for your time. And, you know, I loved hearing about Diginex. It sounds like they're just a really an awesome company that's, that's actually a big player in the space now and coming bigger and bigger. It's just wonderful to see good go-to companies that are helping solve real world business problems with blockchain. So thank you Absolutely. so much for joining. Thank us. you for having me. It's been fun.
Yeah, you were fun. Well, um, I guess this is it. This is Monica Prophet and Tristan Toma signing off on the New Trust Economy, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks. Thank you. You've been listening to the New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring the new trust economy with us.